Joe Montana here is uh, joining us now, the four-time Super Bowl champ, uh, Hall of Famer, of course. Have you ever worn your four Super Bowl rings at the same time? I can't remember the last time I had one on. <laughs> All four, no. But if I'm you not. go to the Super Bowl, uh, when you're down there, or a Hall of Fame event, you're not wearing uh, any of your rings, no? Uh, no, none of them. Uh, not, and the, not either the Hall of Fame one either. Where is the nearest like trophies? One? What? Like, I treat them like trophies. What, right? Where are they right now? In the, in the safe here in the house. Do you know That's the combination? It. Can you get them out for us? <laughs> it might Can take you? me a while to think of it. <laughs> see, what was my birthday again? <laughs> uh, it's good to talk to you. We were talking about quarterbacks and how you come into the league, and it used to be you had to adapt to the coach and his style, his system. If you were coming out of Notre Dame now, would, mm -hmm. would they be adapting to your style more so than the other way around? No, I still think it happens that you you walk into a system. Whoop. Sorry about that. Somebody is at the door. Somebody's here early. <laughs> oh, that's my my daughter dropping our granddaughter off. So <laughs> we you got have, her today. You have to go get her. No, no, no. My wife. Oh, okay. Jennifer's gonna grab her. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that, I think you adapt to a system. I mean, you have to learn, and, and then I mean, if you start having success, I think the if you look at guys like Peyton. Or, eventually got to the point where he was able to kind of control the offense and do things he wanted to do. And I think that was, when you look at Tom, I think that's part of the reason he left was he wanted to do things and they wanted to do something different or wouldn't allow him to do those things. And a short time I had with him on uh, at the Super Bowl was, you know, and they, they asked me what I want to do and I tell them and then they do something different or the opposite. So I think it was, I think that was kind of, he was looking for a little bit more control on that side, but I, um, I think that, typically coming out of college, sometimes they'll adapt a little bit of what you do if it's totally different from what they do. I mean, if you look at the 49ers and you go back and, um, well, not just them, but you go to Cam Newton or um, any of those guys that ran the read option, you know, everybody tried to do that at first. And then the defense figures out, you know, how to defend it. And the, and the NFL didn't take them long. And so you don't see that as much as you, you used to see uh, when it first became a fade, a fad in the, in um, in college, and then and the hard part is, is you don't that style doesn't really lend itself to learning how to read a defense in most cases. So I think that's why a lot of those guys struggle. Do you think that Bill Walsh would have let you run the offense from the line of scrimmage? <clears throat> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you pause for effect there, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I was. Trying to figure out another nice way to say it. <laughs> I think that was it. Um, he, you know, I, there's so many plays in his, in our game plans. And we would have 130 passes every week in a game plan. I mean, we throw the ball 25, 30 times at the most. And we have 130 some play, passes only with oh, a couple of different formations. And so it was, it, it would have been too hard to try to game plan your and study the things you had to study to learn that offense that was in that was in uh, you were going to run that week. So uh, I don't think he would let me do it. We had we had well, I mean, he gave me full reign and control. You know, the plays in. Hey, it's up to you to do something better, take advantage of something. You're free to do it as long as it works. <laughs> Did you get yelled at by Bill Walsh? Um, Bill never. Bill didn't yell. He had this subtle way about him. I, I still remember it as uh, the, one of the. I threw an interception in the in the end zone one time, and I used to go from the field right to Bill, and then I'd go to the phones and talk to the coaches upstairs. And as I was coming off the field, he had his card with all the plays on it in this hand, and he, he was doing this thing right here like this. Uh -oh. And I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> and he got over there, and I he said. He looked at me and I said, what was that? I said, um, I think they call that an interception. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he looked dead, dead pan. Try not to let that happen. Again. <laughs> I said, I, okay, I promise I won't. That was my last time going straight to Bill. From that point on, I went to the phones and then back to Bill. But you didn't go rogue that often, did you? That like not no, he just he expected so much of the quarterback position. I didn't care if it was Steve DeBerg, me, Steve Young, Steve 
Bono, doesn't matter. I mean, he expected per perfection out of that position of all of them. I mean, he wanted everybody to strive for that perfect game, but more so he wanted the quarterback to be perfect, make great decisions, never make a mistake. It's not going to happen, but you know, in, in areas like that, he had, he was pretty, he was pretty demanding. Um, when it comes when it comes to the quarterback, he's uh, Joe Montana joining us on behalf of a new relationship announced today between Notre Dame and Guinness. Hey, I can relate to yeah. both of those beer and football. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta love it. I think what a better combination, right? Two great traditions uh, joining up to uh, you know enjoy and hopefully we're getting ready to celebrate the the coming back of football. I'm not sure it's going to happen though, but um, in the same time, I, when you look at them, I think they both have. Uh, great, great traditions behind him, looking to do the same things, commitments to, to making the world a better place, and also trying to get people together and enjoy it. And whether it's enjoying football or sports, we're going to do it and with a nice glass, a pint of, of Guinness. And then we would have had, what was it, Navy and Notre Dame in Dublin this year? Yep. It got canceled. And, and, yeah. There would have been a lot of Guinness being poured right around there. And yeah. that would have been fun. Would have loved, would have loved to seen that. So I don't know. Hopefully it still happens. And we'll see what, how it goes. I've, I've been on the Notre Dame campus on a weekend and there wasn't much partying going on there, Joe, but when you were at Notre Dame, did you party much? There was no partying at Notre Dame. At all, <laughs> <never>. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take it your word, Joe. You would never lie to me. You never did that, right? You know, it's, it's one of the biggest tailgates that you know that around college. I know it may not be as epic as some of the big um, Southern schools that like to to say, but I'll tell you what: there's a lot of Guinness being consumed in those parking lots, <laughs> and, and uh, it was. I mean, it's fun to go back to a game. I think it's one of the most exciting places to to go watch a football game. I've never been there. The tradition just you know, leaks out of everything as you walk around the campus. And Jennifer fell in love on, on Fridays. The band comes through the campus. and She just makes sure that we're there every, every time we go, um, that we're there for that, that scene as they come through and play uh, the fight song through the campus. So. Where would you have gone if it wasn't Notre Dame? <clears throat> I, I was, I was torn between if, if something that happened in, because I, I was dreamt to go to Notre Dame. And, and so I, as soon as they offered me, I canceled all the other schools. But I had probably somewhere like Michigan State or Georgia were on top top of the list at that time. Um, but luckily for me, I didn't have to make a decision. <laughs> so where did uh... – how do you, do you – I know you didn't lose the Super Bowl, but you're Jimmy Garoppolo. You got to a Super Bowl and you lost a Super Bowl. So mm -hmm. what advice – and in the offseason, the front office kicked the tires on bringing in Tom Brady here. Well, I, I think when you, if you have a chance to bring someone like Brady, obviously as successful as he's been, bringing him back home, I think that would have been a great decision for him. <clears throat> um what does it say about Jimmy? I don't, I don't think it says much when you look at a, at a caliber person like, like Tom coming in, if that was the case, but in, in the side of it, you know, you have to, Jimmy has to keep his head up. I mean, he played first full season and got to a Super Bowl with them and then played, I thought played pretty well. I mean, he made, he ended up making those guys. I think they tried to protect him too much in the Super Bowl. I'm not sure why, you know, you miss a throw. We all miss throws. Yeah, was that a big throw he missed? Yeah, it was a big throw, but it's, it happens. He needs to stay positive and believe in himself. I think the worst thing you can do as a quarterback, I don't care if no one around you believes in you. The only person that has to believe in you is you. And the minute you give that up, you you won't be the starter any longer. You've got to fight and stay in there and believe. And he has nothing to, he has nothing to be ashamed of. I don't know. I mean, every year there's somebody that loses in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And every year there's a bunch of other teams that don't even get there. So, hey, be proud of the season you had and just think of, hey, next time I have that throw, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'll make it. And don't let negative things creep into your head. I know we've had conversations before about keeping everybody happy on offense. And, you know, Jerry Rice, you have the greatest receiver of all time, keeping him happy. And, of course, Jerry was always open. 
That's why when I hear these stories about <laughs> Antonio Brown and teams that should pick him up, it's hard to have that player as a chip on his shoulder, wants to prove everybody wrong, and you got to you got to keep him happy there. How how do you do that as a quarterback where you you got that guy who keeps telling you I'm open and he wants to he wants to prove everybody wrong? Um you try to do the best that you can to get him involved. I mean, there, Jerry never complained. If you could tell on occasion if we hadn't thrown him a pass that there was something different going on, but he was quiet. He never said much in the huddle. And like you said, every time he said, Jerry, were you open? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, looking at you. Like, you watch the video. There's three guys on him. Yeah, I was open, though. <laughs> but, but they're all like that. They all want the ball. That's the kind of guy, though, you want. Right? You want someone who wants the ball, but he can't have it all the time, right? I mean, I, mean, I think teams started figuring out how to play the 49ers was to keep Jerry from getting behind everybody and putting somebody there and on him and then somebody behind him. Don't let him get down the field on you. And that makes you have to go to the other side. Now, we were fortunate, though, when we had John Taylor, you know, and I feel bad for John because John was. If he had asked for a trade and gone somewhere else, he'd have been Jerry Rice. He was he was a freak of nature. Never said a word though. I mean, we'd run double routes. I mean, I felt so bad for him. We'd run like, we don't run double routes much anyway. We'd run like double comebacks with deep 25 yard outs. And oh, John Taylor, John Taylor, ah, Jerry Rice. <laughs> and you look over there, you look over there, and John Taylor's wide open and going, Damn. sorry, John. But, but, but wait, wait, is this story true though? When you threw the touchdown pass to John Taylor to win the Super Bowl against the Bengals, was Jerry Rice the, the, decoy in pretty much the- yeah yeah the, the 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 gist of the route was in the inside and what bill bill studied well most coaches do this but they'll study in like a certain motion or something and a formation will put him into a certain coverage and that motion tended to kick them into two deep safeties and john taylor has a read route so he has if there's a single safety he hooks to the outside if there's split safety takes a little nod out and then splits the safeties trying to stay closest to the one by him. And Jerry's just really dressing on the cake to get him to the end of that coverage. Yeah. How did Jerry feel about being a decoy in the Super Bowl where John Taylor catches the, the game winning touchdown? I'm sure he wanted the ball too. I'm sure he was open over there on the side, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, he's no matter much how much he wanted the ball, he still was a great team player. You know, he, he was so happy for John. You know, obviously, you know, he was the um, the MVP, yeah. so it, it didn't really matter. And, uh, you know, one other item, we, of course, lost our good buddy Dwight Clark, so he took with him to the grave the secret of were you really trying to throw the ball away against the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys, Joe? I guess we're never going to know if you were, or Everson Walls, maybe, uh, if you were really trying to throw that ball away. Well, I was trying to throw over a six-foot-eight guy. So, <laughs> so that was Ed Too Tall Jones is in your face. <laughs> and so I had, to, I thought I had it soft enough up there. And when I let it go, I, I thought it was arm's length above his head. And everybody, I heard him scream. I forgot, okay, touchdown, no big deal. And our equipment manager, when we got on the sideline, he said to me, Boy, your buddy saved your ass that time. <laughs> said, you know, wait, what are you talking about, you? Know? He goes, he jumped out of this. He jumped out of the stadium to catch that pass. I'm going, Chico, he's white. He can't jump. Come on, what's <laughs> the don't you get? But uh, yeah, I mean, he made a great catch. Where is, it, Where is that ball? Where is that ball? I think Dwight had. Well, Dwight had it. Oh, yeah. And did. I mean, there's always a, a. Everybody says they have it, so I'm not sure for sure where it is, but. Um, yeah, it's it was uh, he made a great catch, and then we we never thought we'd ever we never threw the ball to Dwight on that play. We ran that play a million times during the year, and Bill made us the weirdest thing is Bill made us practice it in in training camp to throw that to him. We both thought he was crazy, but well, we never throw it to him. You're supposed to go down and set a pick and just throw the ball to Kai coming off the pick. That's it's simple, but little did we know how important it would be later in the oh. center for two goals. So yeah. Hey, great to uh, talk to you. Joe is going to be featured in uh, Guinness TV spots, social media, other promotional activities in uh, the months ahead. And uh, hopefully we'll we'll get a chance to have a beer together there, Joe. It's great to see I you. Think, I think there's some coming your way. Oh, 
Yeah, so you, hopefully you, you buried you guys the lead. Enjoy. You buried the lead, Joe. We're getting huh? <laughs> we're getting Guinness. All right. Yeah, yeah. it's coming your direction. Go so Irish. Forward. Yeah, I mean both sides. So happy to be a part of this this partnership, and always great to talk to you. Thank you, buddy. And I just checking though when you ran out of here, are you okay? Just want to make you know because I have my daughter left some diapers here in case if you need one. Wow. Running the bathroom. I know you're getting older. Wow. So. Just checking to make sure you're okay. Wow. Everything's still working. Yeah, it is. <laughs> sometimes it works too well, Joe. It works sometimes it works too often where I, you gotta get up and, and go. So but thank you for looking out for me. Uh, uh, my best to Jennifer and uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Always great to talk to you. That's uh, Joe Montana.